All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And my good friend Kimberly Crow is back with us. And today we're going to be talking about awakening your divine blueprint. We're going to be talking about releasing from the mind constructs of humanity and awakening your divine blueprint to be your sovereign self. Kimberly is going to be doing some mini healing sessions on the call with you live callers and a group healing activation with a greater aspect to access your, your sovereign being through activating your source codes of your divine blueprint. <laughs> it's such a mouthful. And so some, some, of what we're, some of what we're going to talk about is having a clear connection to your divine blueprint during these trying times. When you align your blueprint to your, your sovereign being flows and a whole new way of being evolved. And the connection allows you to give meaning and context to the things that happen in your life. And you'll find the truth of your sovereign one in achieving more clarity by connecting and awakening your divine blueprint. So all that and more like always, right? So for those of you who don't know Kimberly, she is an everyday mystic and is known as the healer's healer. She's a sacred witness to the inner awakened mastery. I am Retonements. She's an internationally known visionary teacher, artist, and transformational teacher with over 30 years experience. And she can help you achieve your heart's desires by tuning into, clearing, and harmonizing your unique energy systems. As guided by divine creator, Kimberly can tap directly into your soul to help you achieve your purpose and passions in life. So yay, awesome, Kimberly's back with us. We always have such a wonderful time. It's always a high vibe call. The activations are always like really powerful. So. <laughs> So we're looking forward to that. And because it is Kimberly's birthday week, or we could say Yay. birthday month, even, right? Birthday yes. month. <laughs> so happy, happy birthday. So glad you're here and sharing your beautiful energy with us as well. So let's see. So I know we're going to take some live caller questions a little bit later, but let's just let's just talk a little bit about you know, what does it mean to awaken your divine blueprint? What does it mean to be your sovereign self, your sovereign being self? What does all that really mean? And especially in this time where we are right now? Yeah, what the way the greater aspect is the team that works with me, which is I am part of, you know, because it's like where we're all multiple aspects of us. We're in many dimensions and it's there's an aspect of me that's a part of that. And the way they've showed all of this to me is that um, we have these source codes, like our binary codes that, that we came in with, you know, all our accumulated knowledge, all of our ancient knowledge and all of our future knowledge. And so through life, traumas, this, that, feeling the non-accepted energy, shutting ourselves down, we kind of unplug from some of that unless we are, you know, raised in a place that our divine essence was celebrated from the day that we got here mm -hmm. and that we're, we've always been seen as who we, you know, that the gift we came to be, then maybe you were lucky enough that um, that didn't happen, but I've not met anybody yet. <laughs> I've not met any, but I haven't met everybody in the whole world and everybody from every country. Maybe somebody like the Dalai Lama, you know, it's like he probably was recognized for his well, walk and. Yeah, yeah he was when he was like three or four years old. Yeah, absolutely. But none of us were. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <for> sure. <laughs> so unless you're the Dalai Lama, then you probably wouldn't be on the call today. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. He could show up. <laughs> He's a pretty cool guy. So, <laughs> so anyway, that we, we, we unplug, we are the ones that shut it down and unplug from it. Mm -hmm. You know, even when we think we have gave our power away or whatever to someone else, we haven't. It's yeah. like, we are the ones that do it in order because it's a protection mechanism that happens to be accepted. And so then we start unplugging from all of that. So it's there, your divine blueprint has always been there, you know? So awakening to it is really remembering it mm -hmm. and stepping back in to the truth that you really are. So, um, so, you know, through this 60 years around the sun, now I finally realized that it's like, I came in with source codes. I, you know, that is what I came to earth to do. It's like, it's part of what my assignment was. I came in with seventh dimensional frequencies to start with. And it took me a long time, you know, to uncover those and understand that and know that that's who, who I 
you know, who I am in essence of my being and that it was part of my assignment to come here to do that. So that vibration is the codes of like your destiny and your, your passion and your creator, your creative activity, like your creative energy. And when you're plugged into all of that, then your currency flows. And then there's just this divine energy. It's like infinity symbol. I see this infinity waves. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, it, the, it's like the, it comes in and then it goes back out. And so you're in that web and flow with life and not in the struggle is the word that I'm going to use. You know, you're not in the struggle struggle when you're tapped into to that divine blueprint and your codes are lit up and that they're activated then you're more in the path of grace and ease when you step into that and so so that's what happens and then you're your sovereign self you're not blaming everything around you for everything that's going on you have an understanding of it you see what's going on you know that somewhere in there your soul is it's in an evolution process and that even, you know, if you get knocked out, then that's when you check in and go, okay, well, what was going on? And you connect inside and find out really what's going on. I mean, like when I was talking about, I got into the poison right before the call started, I got mm -hmm. into poison ivy this week and my eyes were all swollen up. And, you know, I was suffering. I, was, I, I wasn't in pain, but I was miserable. Yeah. And I was like suffering with it because I had a lot to get done. And, and I believe really honestly, a part of me needed time out mm -hmm. and you know it's like you're not going to take it so here here it's in your eyes now <laughs> you, you mm -hmm. can't even see now you get to sit down and then I, I went in to my own inner committee room to the energy you know that I embody and asked what to do for this and immediately you know because people were going go get a shot do this do that and I had all the ingredients that I needed here to mix up what I needed to pull yeah. that energy out of my body. But I went inside and asked my own self. I asked my own body and my own connection to that and what was the most beneficial thing for me at the time to do. And as soon as I did it, it was like, okay, that's over. And, you know, and when you go through those kinds of things, then you almost like, then you have the rush of energy afterwards, you know, our immune system kicks in and now we're like glowing and we have this rush of energy. So sometimes even things like that, you know, sister Ivy comes through or cousin Sumac to give us a wake up call. <laughs> yeah. And it was a wake up call and it was also, Hey, you need a break. You know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so yeah. What, when we can look at things like that in that in that perspective of okay what is this really showing me what is this telling me instead of being a victim right instead of playing the you know playing the victim victim and having that victim energy running through us instead if we can ask questions and be open to us like okay how is this a gift to me right now how is this a blessing how is this something that my soul or that I really require right now right what's yeah what was what was in um, this harmony, you know, it's like mm -hmm. what was not in flow and what was ready to come in harmony. And so I did, you know, I did start nurturing stuff. It's like, I did things to raise my vibration and to allow it, to allow it to be. So you move more into that when you're connected and then, and you're into the flow. And so I have the ability that I can actually look, I can see the matrices. Those my matrices that, um, are engaged and ha um, how they throw us off of their path. So that's, we'll disconnect from all of those chaotic minds that are out there. And then we unplug with that and then we can drop into our inner core and activate our codes that are there. They're there for us. They always have been. It's just, it's really plugging back into them. You know, as I, as I was saying that, I was seeing like those visions of like the old, you know, operators you know when they used to when telephones were run by the operators and mm -hmm. they plugged in everything so yeah. we're re, we're plugging in plugging in and um taking all the little kinks out of out of it so it's really it's our lot body and it's a higher it's their higher frequency lot bodies that just keep going out and keep going out you know into the dimension so it's what it, the 
axitonial lines, which is all the little grids and lines that go off of us. Mm -hmm. So when we start activating that, then that those that um, those energy lines or life threads can expand and expand, and then we you know connect to um, what our assignment is and the other people that are here to support us along the way, and that we're there to support them. So that's what's happening. We start embodying it then then mm -hmm. we you know we because that's what we came to do that's what ascension is yeah and it's so that you know embodying, embodying those, it yeah and embodying the codes embodying our sovereign self you know and you know in this lifetime right here and now that's what we're all trying to do by raising our vibration right by doing but, all of our practices that we do it is about embodying who we are and you know you're um you know, you're really connected to who you are. So you can go in and ask questions of yourself, like what's going on, show me, you know, let me see what's happening, right? But for those of us who may not be as connected, right? What can we do to, you know, really connect to who we are and find out what's going on with our system right now? Why is this happening to us? Not to us, but like, why is this happening? What do I need to learn from this? What can I, you know, get from this, gain from this? What's the wisdom in this? that's what it is that's what you do just what you said you ask the questions <laughs> he's like get quiet ask the questions and connect to see you know what what is it what is the energy that's here for you today what you know what's the blessing in it it's like yeah. what is the blessing in it that the energy is there and what's the presence that it gives i mean honestly you know this whole situation that the world has been in this world situation um you know that what's global okay mm -hmm. ha, you can there's all kinds of theories out there you can tap into it it's all true every bit of it because it, it's true when the mind connects to it it's like channels so when you're in that channel then that's what your vision is and that's what you're connected to and you can move past all of those channels and go above that mm -hmm. and to and look at you know what's really happening and you know I, like one night I always woke up I, in the middle of the night and I'm like, okay, why am I awake? And I heard spirit say, well, go look to see, you could go look and see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and immediately I tapped into what I identify as Gaia, the spirit of earth. And, um, you know, for her, it was, it was a break. Humanity went into timeout. And when humanity went into timeout, she is who nurtures us and sustains all our life. We wouldn't have life if it wasn't for earth sustaining us and mm -hmm. she needed a break <laughs> she needed a break from humanity and look how fast she healed yeah we would have never put ourselves in time out we wouldn't have done it mm -hmm. we wouldn't have taken the time to stop our cars to quit driving to quit yeah. running 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 and doing all that we were doing you know, when you saw those pictures of like California, especially mm -hmm. as busy as the roads are out there and they were, you know, in, in New York, quietness, there was like this quietness that was there. It was yeah. a still point time. So we've been in a reset, you know, and when you can look at it from that, 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 you know, place of it, it does, does it mean that I didn't feel compassion and sympathy and sorrow for people that were you know, losing family, of course I did, because it's part of your heart and you, you know, and you, you still have those feelings, mm -hmm. but you can also see it for, um, you know, the truth of what it is. And that when we go through these things on such a large thing that we're all dreaming in, you know, there are people that volunteer to um, take it on to show the rest of us you know this is what's going to happen to you if you don't make changes in your life and and also they volunteered so they can um be the way showers and maybe even come back as their you know the, their next evolution process you know mm -hmm. it works both ways yeah because the soul is like okay i'm ready to go on with the show and get to the next place you know it's on some level it's always that it's always the soul evolving we step into another form yeah Absolutely. So you can, you can't, when you, when you're connected like that, what the reason I'm talking about that is you can actually see world tragedy as the, you know, the truth of what it really is. And then you are your sovereign self and you're not, you know, um, going crazy because 
everybody's running to buy the toilet paper and you didn't get to the store fast enough. You don't, you know, it's like you just sat back and watch, watch it all. You kind of watch it and go, wow, that's interesting. That's like totally interesting. You can see it from that perspective. Yeah. And there is a way to like be aware of what's going on, but not be so affected by it. Like stay distracted exactly. a little bit, you know, a, a little bit arms like just to observe and see, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I get it. Some people are more affected than others for sure. You know, I mean, I, I remember back in March, it was a horrible, horrible time here um, with my um, uh, stepson and, and my parents in, in Canada and all that wonderful stuff. So I was a little bit on edge. I'll be honest. I was a little bit on edge. But uh, once that passed, then I was like, it was really actually nice because there were less people here in the city and, you know, <laughs> it was really quiet. <laughs> right? right it was really nice and um so i enjoyed that but this has been a, this has been a great time of reset for all of us and i've been taking great advantage of it you know of this time of reset you know it's given me space to think space to be safe space to create space to plan the, the future right it, it's it's been great you know and um and so if we can see that as this being a blessing and a gift as well for all of us we can appreciate some aspects of it right of, of what's happening yeah and when so when you're not plugged into all those i keep changing glasses because my eyes are blurred today from where they've had whatever and all my glasses seem blurred and it's like no it's just my <laughs> eyes <laughs> so what uh, are you not willing to see <laughs> it's like time for a new vision that's it it's time for a new vision <laughs> new visions on the horizon so um yeah and with, so you can be the observer when you disconnect from all of that mind even when it comes in if i start feeling it and i know i've tapped into everything or even when i, I was watching things you know i did watch the stuff i did watch to see what was happening in the world mm -hmm. and you know to see really kind of okay do i need to know any of this information and then I would disconnect from it afterwards. Right. It's yeah. like, okay, I took that in. Now I'm, now I'm the observer. I've watched what, you know, is happening in the world events. And then I unplugged from that mind. Afterwards, I would just unplug from it. And I didn't need the scenarios to keep informing me and to be running around in my consciousness. You know, it's like, it's all, it's all okay. And, um, you so you take the information you use it as a tool you know you're informed yep. it's like driving down the road and the sign says detour or, you know they're redoing a road or whatever you can either try to drive through the construction mess or you can go around it so that's you know you use yeah. it all as your tool yeah exactly and yeah. so and that's the thing is about you know life and the experiences that you're that you're having and experiencing can you see them as tools for your growth? Can you see them as tools for your expansion, for your, you know, evolution, right? Because they are, everything is. Everything is serving you in some way, right? Yes. And, you know, we don't always want to see that because we're sometimes we're in resistance to what's happening and, you know, all that wonderful stuff. I had an experience today that I, you know, I came across something and it's like, whoo, it brought me down for a little bit. And it's like, all right, what's the gift in this? All right, what's the blessing in this? What's the teaching in this? What's the wisdom in this, right? And so then once I was able to like de, de, uh, de, hmm, detract myself, <laughs> unattach myself from it, right? Um, bring some space to it and ask those questions. It's like, okay, cool, got it, you know? And it was much better. But we all are being, you know, being asked to really step up and be more conscious, be more aware, you know, and not just go into reaction. And if we do go into reaction, then there is probably a um, uh, wounded emotion that's hid down in there to uncover. It's probably some time in our life that, you know, when we experience some kind of trauma, we freeze, we, you know, somewhere we didn't breathe. Mm -hmm. And so that part's still in there. And there's a part of soul actually in order to evolve it will you know send the signal out and pull the information pull that energy to you to feel the reaction to release it mm -hmm. so the more we release you know the energy then um and i've had i've had those experiences too now that um 
maybe even, you know, that it's uh, just a moment, that it's actually a visceral reaction that happens, you know, like when an animal goes through a trauma, afterwards, they shake it off. We carry yeah. it around, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like we just try to carry it. And I've had those times where it just vibrated out of me and it was done. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to go through the experience of remembering whatever that was and dissecting it and going through you know, all of my shadow work and archetypal stuff, it's just like you get to the point to where it just kind of vibrates, you breathe and go, whoo, I don't know what that was, but <laughs> you go on, you yeah. know? And, yeah. and so it does, at, you know, it does, it does get easier. It, you know, I can't from being at this place and, you know, where I was 30 years ago, I can definitely look back and see the difference. Yeah, same, same, absolutely. <laughs> Right. Night, night and day, totally different person. It's like, oh my God. Right, exactly. And <laughs> yeah. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know who I was the first 30 years of my life. I mm -hmm. didn't. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, you know, I lived whatever the program life was. I never thought I was supposed to be here. And I kept waiting for whoever it was that dropped me off here. To I remember as a child, think, you know, like I was Superman or something and that I had someday somebody was going to come back and get me because I didn't know what I was doing here. Yeah. Um, and I always felt that, but I was, yeah, it was, you know, it's been 30 years since I, I didn't know what a shocker was 30 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. So all of that. Um, We've come a long way. Yeah. And then, but when I awakened, I awakened, you know, on a fa fast track, it was yeah. like, a, it was really fast. Cause I, you know, and then as I looked back, I saw the divine plan. I can see that now. Yeah. I can see how every single, you know, part was part of the plan. And, and, you know, and I also see that at the time, because we've done, you know, so many people have walked the walk that they've had and held the vibration that they have. I can see a difference in people that are awakening now. Mm -hmm. They're doing it faster and going through things, you know, like Zoom Mm -hmm. And I do think it's because there's a higher consciousness and a higher vibration that's being helped in humanity. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy time, but it can be a wonderful time as well. Right. So don't lose sight of that, of that, that, you know, everything that you're experiencing right now, everything that that's coming into your field of awareness is teaching you something. It's, it's not just teaching, but it's opening up you know, more in you to be aware of uh, and basically be aware of who you really are. You know, yeah, it's waking us up to the consciousness of, you know, and even even what we were talking about a while ago, it, that is awakening up a consciousness that people are sitting back and going, what was this rat race that I have been in? And then everything changed. And maybe we didn't need to be doing all of the things that we were doing. You know, it's like when you witness Oh, wait a minute. How did we get at this point where we were keeping these plates spinning mm -hmm. constantly in the way that we were? Yeah. And so there's going to be new ways from all of this. There is definitely going to be new waves of ways of energy and how things will, um, you know, um, be in the future. It's like it's, there will be a lot of that that's going to be awakening in people. And um, we carry our we carry our heart seeds within our it's in our own heart the seeds like the seeds of creation we all have we'll do that today we'll go I'll guide you all to go into your sacred heart and into your sacred where your sacred seeds are mm -hmm. and those seeds are there for us so it's it's there and it's like what we came to grow you know into the world our creative seeds are there. And so as those, um, sometimes we hide them and we can't connect to them anymore. And then as we nurture that and they activate, then that starts blooming and opening. And then, you know, you eventually have like a whole garden of creation. And um, then you're not so much ruled and controlled by just the, I, I want to use the word mundane. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, it's just like of what that programming was and what you think you have to do for survival. It starts changing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so and be, then, be willing to embrace the change. Go ahead, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't go on. Yeah. 
you know, I don't it, know what I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but it, but it is about being willing to embrace the change instead of resisting the change, embrace it because with the change is going to come new opportunities, new possibilities, new ways of being, new ways of seeing, right? And you're going to open up to different parts of you the more that you're willing to change, mm -hmm. allow the change, right? And, and, and you know, most of the time, like lots of times, even on these calls, when somebody will say, well, I can feel this sabotaging me and what is it? And they know, they know already. And most of the time, it's something there that is so afraid to let go of what they, how they think that things should be and how it's supposed to be and uh and and we don't even know that you know it's like it, we may let go of it and everything changes like sometimes people are afraid to really step into that and that opening and that expansion that they're afraid that they'll lose relationships partnerships mm -hmm. people in their life yeah and and you know it's like maybe they're tired of holding the space that they have at the same time too it, it could be that you both get to evolve into the next, that you're both holding each other in these same patterns because yeah, that's absolutely. what starts happening. Yeah. That's what we, we start holding each other in the same, same patterns. Yeah. And then you can just keep going down the same pattern over and over again, instead of something new uh, opening up or something new unfolding. Right. Awesome. All right. So, so I know we're going to take some live caller questions. So um, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but if you do have a question for Kimberly, you can raise your hand or you can type your question in the chat. All right, Kimberly, ready to take some questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's like, yeah. And happy birthday, Tina, by the way. Sorry, I didn't see that before, but happy birthday. Belated birthday. Your birthday was on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday. Oh, they're little Libras. Yay, <laughs> little Libras. Uh, all right, we're going to go to Stella. Stella, you've got your hand raised. Do you want to unmute yourself? Where's Stella? There, Stella. There I am. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. 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 What's your question for Kimberly? Well, I Hannah had a call in I don't know how many years. I've been very good with getting any, and I got it this time. I have a. Um, I guess it's in my chest. And I like to know if it has something to do with the spiritual or is it physical that I'm overdoing it? Hmm. It's always all of it. <laughs> some <laughs> level, it's, it's not separated. Some level, it all goes together. Okay, so let me go. I'm going to jump into your energy field and see what's going on with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, it actually feels kind of environmental that like, it feels like something that in your environment, and it could even be just, uh, uh, right now we're, you know, the seasons are changing. And so it, but it feels, I can see like, um, little particles, like you breathed them in. And so there was something like in your environment that irritated you, um, so it's almost like the cold response is almost like an allergic response to something because then your system's trying to get to get rid of it. So it have you did anything change or is there anything in well, your environment was, that's been irritating you? Well, I, I was uh, in Cincinnati visiting my 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 family with my granddaughter and great granddaughter. Then I came back and I did thing is. I think it has to do with my older son. I can see that he's like killing himself, eating all these sweets and getting heavier. And you can't say anything to him. He gets very, very defensive, very upset. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but. Yeah, I, so emotionally that probably affected you. And it sounds like you, cause I felt like maybe you were empathing some things. So that would make, I mean, if that was in your environment, and so your, you know, lungs is heart. I mean, that's grief. Your lungs is grief. And so you're, you know, that there's almost like a grief energy in, in how you felt about witnessing whatever that was with him. And so it, it feels like there's a part of you that like breathed it in, like you wanted to, you know, take it, like you took it, out, tried to take it out of the environment. Um, so it's not serving you any, you know, a purpose right now for that. Let me see what we can do if we can do something like to try to clear it out. 
Thank you. In a city, get a tourist at the carry, is to to carry, shut the carry, set the carry. Yeah, there's some sadness in there with it. So you took it on in that way. I see it like a cloud around you. Um, and then I also feel it at your, like your umbilical cord. So it's like how you're still corded in with him too. It's like representing that. Um, okay, let's, I don't think that's not helping you any right now. We're gonna unplug that. Okay, so we're, that energy that I'll just unplug from your and um, where your you know your navel, your belly button. That was you were leaking your life force right. energy out to him, and then plugging that back into Earth, into Gaia, so that you can feel support supported by her, by the Divine Mother. How do you judge yourself over this? Because you judged yourself over that you couldn't help your own child. Is what I'm hearing. How'd you judge yourself with it? Well, self-judgment thing. I, I am a healer. I am, I help a lot of people. I do massage and, and they all listen or they all do whatever I tell them and they are in health, very healthy. And all of a sudden, I, my family, I can't do anything. I feel, it's like they don't listen. They, I don't, I try not to even say anything. Yeah. Totally it's, normal. It's, Our own families never listen to us. No. <laughs> totally normal. But we but we feel guilty. We feel responsible, and because we you know we want to be able to help. But you know, everybody so that's has what I would. That's what I would look at, Stella, to connect into yourself and see what that. Because um, there's layers to it of what you know, like the mother's guilt that you're carrying, and that that we guilt ourselves with that, and it's like that's you know BS. We can't carry that anymore. Their souls here just like we are <laughs> on their right. path that they have to learn their self. And there's a point to where, honestly, when, you know, we're taking other people's karma. And when I say that, it, they never get their lessons and it doesn't help anybody in the long run. And so it's that setting, you know, checking into yourself and then blessing him and knowing that, you know, that you can't carry, the, you carrying the guilt and the grief of this, it's not going to, it's not going to help him, help him or you, <laughs> neither one of you right now. Yeah. So that's what I would look at is if you were going to do some inner work with okay. this right now is to check in to her and your, you know, mother martyr self and tell her how good a job she's done and then release him as the soul that he's here to be. Right. Okay. Good. And take a bunch of vitamin C for you. And I'm also Thank you very, hearing very much. oregano oil is what they're saying for you. So however, if that's a good one for you or not, but the oregano oil is going to, oh, okay. the oregano oil will clear out the virus. So I'm hearing that that's a good one for you particular. Yeah. It's disgusting, but it works. Yeah. I, get some. I would even maybe rub it on me and, you know, you can boil the oregano itself and make a tea with it, gargle it, all that, but it's going to boost your immune system and get the virus out. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go to Randy in a second, but before we do that, I just want to say really quickly, uh, I know Tina wrote in the chat about getting a general reading. There's no general readings. You have to have a specific question, okay? So whenever you get called on, you have to have a specific question. And I think that's more useful <laughs> than a general reading. All right, Randy, you want to unmute yourself? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, Randy. Uh, I would like you to consider my mitochondria and the cells that produce myelin as I'm learning to heal demyelination and DNA damage to my mitochondria. It's been a long journey. I'm making progress here and there. I'll keep that short, but that's a pretty good place to go in case you can. And thank you. I love you. So you want me to look to see what's going on with the mitochondria and the myelin if it's 
What yeah. if it's regenerating? Is that the question? That's what I'm hearing. That you're wanting yeah. to know if it's regenerating is what they're saying. What he really wants started. to know is, is it regenerating? The okay. Has... Okay, let me go in and see. I'll talk to it and see. And we might can do some recoding on it. Oh, but yeah. Mitochondria is one of my, it's like one of my things I walk into all the time. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's see what's going on in your RNA. Okay. Are you taking something that's supposed to be supporting that or that it's like a, a drug? Are you taking some kind of pharmaceutical? Not for that. One muscle relaxer, very minimal. They, they say it can't be done. The only thing that the medical industry can say that's, that's good about it is it's non-transferable. The rest of the information is not likely to improve. So I'm not, I don't yeah, believe that. It's a signal. It's the signal in the RNA itself is what I was seeing. Like there's a missing signal and that there, it looks like a gap. Like if you, you know, if you, if you saw like um, sound waves and so here's your sound wave, you know, if you ever look at a sound wave and you see it and then it looks like there's all of a sudden a glitch, like there's a, a missing sound yes. and that that's, that, that it, it's like, so sometimes it glitches on you. And then, so it looks like that now like i'm seeing it that it's like this one's above the other yes but they're like not coming down and blending in it looks like it's there but there's now almost like an overlap so they're showing me there was a glitch you were here okay you had a glitch and now it's like this so it's bringing this down and like blending them into each other so i That's feel brilliant. like the the new sound wave that you're bringing in is probably um, not what you had to begin with. Okay, I'm even wanting to say it's not human. <laughs> so it's like, it was like, but it's like, I got, oh, it's okay to say that to him. He's okay with that. So, so that is trying to um, come in, and it doesn't know, it doesn't know how to do that yet. There's some something that it's almost like you need to back this up so then this will go together let me see how how it what it needs in there to bridge it together okay so it needs to know why it occurred to begin with um i know so you have an understanding of how it occurred to begin with? Yeah. Yeah, okay. very good. Okay. That's a long story for another day. Yeah, you, we don't have to go into the story. It's not about that, but it needs to know. And, it, and so you got, need to go in and talk to it and let it know that it's okay now. Because whatever the um, animosity and energy that was tied in with it in in before that it's okay and that you have an understanding to the one that went through what they did okay and so let it know that and that it's okay to bridge with this new sound wave that is coming in okay that's a brilliant insight and um grateful and uh thank so you you, un you understand what that means and what yeah. what it, yeah yeah. So when you just assure it and let it know, and that if yeah. you understand that it, it, you know, that it was the cycle that it was in for whatever it was, and that now it's safe to bridge with this other dimensional self of yourself, you know, it's like a higher, it's you, but it's like a walk in you, but it's you. Okay. Just like my Makara is me, but she's like my walk in, but she is me. And so it's, it's you identifying that that aspect is you, it's not something outside of you. And so it's your muscle dimensional self and that it's safe to, to bridge those together. That we're, you're in a time period now that it's safe to bridge it together, okay? I am understanding you through cognition, through assimilation, through, um, uh, through the energy work in the lay language, of course, I feel uh, vibrational, like uh, 
not really like a buzz, more like a, like, like, I'm, um, it's, it's, it's like I'm pushing, except I'm not pushing, you know, like I, I feel like. Okay. I got something else real fast. Sure. <laughs> Who is it that there's a, that if, okay, if you re, if you release the O encodement that the microchondria where it came from, because, you know, it's the RNA, which is passed on, you know, from the mother lineage usually. Okay. So there's a part of you that if you rewire this and you release this, that you, that it's a part that feels like it's, I don't know, almost guilty, disrespectful or something to what the one that you carried it for to begin with. So there's a part too that you need to go look at the lineage and why you took this on to carry this for the lineage and then release that, that release that, release That's the part that carried it for the lineage. Okay. That's interesting because that ties into it's a medical injury injury and I'm changing the world by figuring out how to improve this situation that there's hundreds of thousands of people in my situation with. I can, I can, it's funny how I can put those two together. I bet okay, others good. and I really appreciate it. it's uh it's it's FQAD, which is uh from taking antibiotics that alter your DNA. And uh Yeah, so um you know what even the oregano with that doing those uh what is it called? The thing down your back uh, with essential oils. What is the name of that? I'm losing the name of that. You put the essential oils down your back and, and it takes the viruses out of your back and it also takes the the and the antibiotics out of your out of your system. This what week I found my backpack. It's like you do it and oil. you take that energy down your back. I can't rainbow drop therapy. That's what it's called. That I haven't seen in days. Okay, <laughs> this week I literally got my back with that with my oils. <laughs> you know the girl who taught me about essential oils. She's on the list at the, the World Trade Center, Jennifer Fiaco. Mm. And she taught me that they hold resonance better than crystals or like that. Yeah. So yeah. so that will help clear out what because that wow. could have created the disengagement. Maybe that was the pharmaceuticals I saw. Because I asked you right off the bat, was there ph pharmaceuticals involved? And that was just like with Stella. <laughs> it's in your environment. And then it's like, oh yeah, she'd been around her son. It's like, oh. so when you get the information, when I get it and tell you all it's like okay this is that was the pharmaceutical you know the it blocked the receptor sites i okay. believe i believe with that answer that in the quantum field i knew to go through whatever it took to get to my essential oils days ago in, in, in effect to this yeah I, that, I totally believe that yeah go you may have to go to somebody you can't trying to do rainbow drop therapy on yourself you do the the essential oils down your back and then you open up the spine and then you do hot towels and you let it lay there and it takes all of that out and it'll do it for colds and viruses and stuff like that too so anyway that should that should help with it um you might could even just put it at the base of your neck and then and at your base the two bases where you can touch and then the two point, the three, you know, like do three points where you can put it at and let that uh, work on that. Okay. Thank you. I love okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Good luck with that. Let us know. All right. We're going to go to Mary Ann. Mary Ann, oh, did you want to? I got to start speeding it up here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Is that? Okay. Mary Ann, well, my hello? ear things do not want to stay in. I think okay. My hair is pushing it out. I keep popping out of my ears today. Oh, there she is. I see her. Hi, Marianne. Okay. We can't hear you for some reason. You you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. So oh, now you're muted. Okay, go ahead. Talk. Yeah, no, we can't hear you. And I know that you wrote your question in the chat. You want me to, I'll just read that out. Okay. So Marianne is asking, how can I best heal and transmute my timelines affecting my prosperity and well-being and, and being real and loving? That's really general and vague. <laughs> Let me just look real fast to see if I get something for her. Okay. How do I transmute my timelines? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot there. Um, Specifically for prosperity and well-being. There's uh, your the big thing that's holding you back is whatever that you're still tied in with your lineage. 
because as soon as I asked that, I, it was like, it's coming from your lineage and the belief systems from your lineage. And then how, what you, um, like how, what, how you had to be, to be supported by family in the lineage itself. And so when you start unraveling and letting that go, then you can step into your own divine blueprint and the truth of what you're really here for. Okay. Your soul is like screaming, let go of this. It's, you know, we come into the family that we do for the gifts that they carry, but, but when it's a bondage and the, the belief systems are holding us back. So there, there's something in there with that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there with it. It's not just one belief, but yeah. that's that when you work on it that and release that, then that's going to, um, it's going to help you step into the timeline that you yourself are creating, the one that's out there. So does, do you know what, does that resonate with you? Do you have a sense of what that is? I think she might be typing. Looks like she's typing. Yep. The thing is, it's like when, when it comes to belief systems from our family and from our lineage, uh, that's, that's really, it's really vague, right? Really general and vague. But how do you, um, I don't know. It's like, a, that's a tough one. <laughs> you just step that's out of it. When you, when you really, when you come to that realization that you are a sovereign being, that you're a soul here, just like they are. Yeah. And that when it's a burden, then it's mm. not yours to carry anymore. And yeah. then it, you just kind of step out of it. It doesn't mean that you can't still have connection to them and love them. And they are who they are. But that it's when we, you know, have that realization. But and you don't have to identify. There's a forgiveness with part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a forgiveness part even to, to ourself, you know, yeah. in it and, and to be recognized. So she's working on healing ancestral patterns and programs again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we, yeah. we are all doing that, Marianne. But the thing is, it's like, you know, continue, obviously, but, um, and, and, you know, focus on the ancestral patterns and programs around prosperity, around well-being. And it's about, you know, recognizing. Okay. Go ahead. She's got a, she's got an implant right here that it's almost like a curse from the family that's stayed in there. It's like in between her frontal lobe and her third eye. Um, so it's part that like, sometimes those, uh, they're like, they're curses that mm -hmm. somebody in the family took on. Okay. Mm -hmm. They took it on a long time ago. They did it in order to, for survival, to save the family, blah, 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 blah. And then it keeps being passed on to everybody. And so there's a part of it that if you uh, release it, then you might go crazy. You know, it's like <laughs> somebody probably went third eye blind in mm -hmm. the family a long time ago to save everybody else. So there's, so that that's there. So, um, okay, so let's clear any bindings. This is for everybody on the call, okay? Yeah. All mm -hmm. of you, everybody on here, we're gonna clear all bindings, oaths, vows that may have been any, all tongues that it was spoken in through your lineage, through your ancestral things that do not serve you. None of those serve you. You, can't, you know, to even say the ones that don't serve you anymore doesn't make any sense because none of them serve. So that energy is... That was what they had to do with the time that they did. Okay. So we thank them the, for that and that they experienced what they did in the time that they did so that we could be born and be here now in this now. Okay. So everybody, we're going to do this. We're going to pull this out and let it go because it was put in humanity at the time that it was. And we're not in that time anymore and we don't have to carry it anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close the access point that it came through. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Good. You Thank feel you it? for I that, Marianne. It, I thought, I, I thought all <laughs> mine were gone. It always <laughs> amazes me that I think I've already done all of that and there's no more of those. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I could see it in some people that it was still active. And then I could see it as like the light bulbs there, but the light bulbs went out yeah. and the light's not working anymore. But the, but the light bulb, you haven't taken the old light bulb out. You know, yeah. it was like, so it didn't have a purpose anymore. Yeah, got it. it All right, so let, let us know how, how that, Marianne, good? Yeah, okay, good, awesome. Thank you. We got good. to clear that for everybody. It's yeah, like, okay. thank you. <laughs>
when I pulled out of that, because what I did, it was like, okay, what is this on the bigger picture? I did it that fast, yeah. you know, because I was kind of in her story. And then I pulled out to see what it was in the bigger picture. And I saw how it was in the mind of all of you, you know, humanity. Oh, it's, it's still clearing because I'm yawning. Like, so yeah, you're clear. yawning. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yours, yours probably one of those that I saw just the dead light bulb. It's like, okay, dead light bulb is still here. <laughs> Um, all right, Tina, you want to unmute yourself or should I just ask the question? Let me see where it is. Uh, Tina? Hello? Hi. Yeah. Hi. So specific question, please. Well, I was asking what was holding me back from stepping into my sole purpose, but I mean, maybe it was just, I, and then I thought maybe possible ancestry, but maybe that's what we just were working on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that helped. That helped to connect because that, whatever that was, so there's something now with your throat. And it's that belief that, um, you know, children are to be seen and not heard. And so where you shut that down and that's whether it was said to you or not, it was said in humanity. So a lot of people carry that frequency of that mm -hmm. because that's how we were shut down as children. So that I'm seeing that I'm seeing it at your throat that it wasn't safe to, to speak who you were. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I feel like as, as a child, that's all I ever was doing was trying to say who I was. And I was always told, no, that's not, you know. You weren't seen. It wasn't safe. It was like the more you tried to do it, then the more for you to speak who you are, you feel rejected. Because the, the more, more you speak rejected, who you yeah. are, the more you felt rejected. You yep. know, it's like whether that's what they're really doing or not, that's what it feels like to us. So yep. it's almost like if I do it, then the more I'll be rejected. So that energy's in there. So everybody on here that is that any of us that carry that. Okay. So I feel that like the back of your heart wants to open where we, our heart air, like heart wings are. It's like the wings. It looks like a little bird that, you know, it's the wings got, didn't get to span. They're like there, but they're all crumpled up and it didn't like get pushed out of the nest correctly to be able to expand. The nurturing wasn't fly. there. <laughs> right. The nurturing yeah. wasn't there at the time. Okay. So everybody, I'm going to download you all with the knowing, feeling, and understanding of what it's like to be nurtured, the truth of nurturing, and what nurturing is. Because sometimes our family didn't carry it, especially moms, because they were, they didn't carry it in their own cells to be able to give it to us. Like they didn't know what self-nurturing was and how it, so it couldn't be sent to you because they didn't carry it their self. They shut it down for so long ago. Okay. Okay. So let's, we're going to, let's download that into everybody. And so that it's safe for those wings to open for the heart wings is what I'm hearing. Woo. Well, that's good. I needed that. I need oh, my own heart wings. <laughs> Okay. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, you for speaking that from the formless into form so we could all let go with that one. <laughs> yeah, I felt that. Yeah, I felt that in my heart and in my throat. Um, that, yeah, that your comes, voice changed. Listen yeah. to her voice. It's got a different quality to it than mm -hmm. it did when she first started talking. Yeah, Yay. that came from my mom and from my dad because I moved in with my dad at 12 and then he moved, you know, to show that he loved us and then he moved out and I was raising myself. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that was, whew. Okay, Good, so go into your future. It's like we Thank can't you. keep looking. We Thank won't. You, we, we're not going to create from if we keep looking back into that past of all of that. You know, it's like when we clear those, then it's like, yay, what's in the future now? Because that's where we what we're creating the future from the future, not from the past traumas. <laughs> we'll just keep creating past traumas and scenarios from that. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Odio. Odio. You want to unmute yourself, Odio. Hello. Hello. Um, I've had a dry cough for about 15 years and would really like to see it disappear. Okay, so what, what it, has it served your purpose for 15 years if you've kept it for that long? <laughs> Maybe. So what, what did it, what was the, what did it serve? How did, what was, what is it given you that you kept it for that long? I haven't got a clue. Well, somewhere you do, because if you've carried it for that long, that's a long time to carry something. Um, okay, let me see if we can see real fast. 
Te sutu kori e shata kare na kare e tare na sata kare e tare. So it's a dry raspy cut. Did you ever smoke? No. Did you get secondhand smoke? No. Huh. Because I'm seeing it like some kind of energy like that into your bronchioles. Let me ask. I'm, I'm asking what I'm doing is how looking at your all's energy and then I'm asking how this is going to serve everybody because it, it's like it's not um, if it if it serves everybody, then it's a higher vibration for all of us instead of getting lost in all of these stories that are happening today. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like <clears throat> we're getting lost in all the stories. Okay, so let me um, I don't know. It looks like the filters and it did, what about um, what's that called? Insulation, you know, like the fiber insulation stuff. Because it looks like that, like the same things that's in cigarette filters, like something environmental like that, that you, that you breathe something in in that way. So that's there. But the fact that you've kept it for that many years, some way it benefits you and you have to be the one that knows what that is. You've got to look at it and see what has it given to you and how it has benefited you so you just you go in and you ask how has this benefited me you do it journaling or whatever it is because it's it won't let it's covert and it's moving over to the side and it's like you have to be the one that uncovers how it benefited you and when you realize why you carried it for as long as you did and that it been and this is for anybody that's got anything that they've been carrying forever there's some part that believes it benefits them it mm -hmm. gave something to them and when you asked it that instead of trying to hide it beat it up or shame it it's like well how did it benefit me and then you get an answer you know it's like well how did you benefit me it will tell you so that is your that's your quest your yeah. inner inquiry quest to find out for yourself and when I you find that out then there's gonna you can um there's something that will change in there does that make sense? Yeah, but I was thinking I've been a saleswoman in a bakery. Could it be the smelling the, the flower? Oh, inhaling flower. Were you working there when it first started? Yeah. It could have been something within there. Because I am seeing particles, but it looks more solid than that. So did I, it get did it get you out of work when you coughed? No. So do some soul searching, ask some questions of the cough and ask how has this been serving me? Okay? Cuz Okay. Like if you did know what that's would you know? That's the answer. Yeah, what would you know if you did know? That's the that's if you get stuck and go, well, I don't know, then it's like, if I did know, then what do I know? And that will start moving the energy. And sometimes it's little pieces that come, and then you just keep asking and asking and asking, and the and the energy starts yeah. uncovering it. So and, and then you'll get it. If I did know because it's like a game. It's like, but if I did know, then what's the answer? And then it could be something that, like you said, you got some kind of answer then because you come up with the flower thing. So that was the answer. So then keep, you know, and then when I asked you a question, you went back to no, and it was like, you closed the energy down again. So it then, okay, so then what was it? It's like, if it didn't get you out of work, then what did it, what was the purpose that it served? Because there's something in there because you connected with, with work in the flower. So just keep asking it, ask the flower what it, you know, what did, was the purpose? What did it serve for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, th thanks, Adil. And you know, that's, and that's everybody. Everybody yeah. with anything you get stuck on, if you just, that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest processes that I've used for myself. Mm -hmm. I just, it's called upchucking. You just keep asking until, 
and then it unravels. It's like it starts telling you all of the secrets, just like a friend. Well, how did you do that? With what did you do? You know, you're your own friend, and then it will it will talk to you, and it will tell you all kinds of things. And the thing and is, you do know deep down inside, you do know, right? And so, if you keep asking that question, okay, if I did know, what would I? What would it be? If I did know, what would I know? If I did know, what would I know? Keep asking that question, and you'll get the answer eventually. Not to yeah. worry. And then that energy will clear, will start to clear or, or, or you'll get, you know, when you know what it is, then you'll understand what the treatment is if, if it's required. Okay. Yeah. Or if it's just a part of what, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're going to just, um, there were some questions in the chat. Where do they go? One second. Uh, cat, where do you go cat? Yeah. She says her partner and her are exhausted not sleeping well, he's having nightmares and she doesn't have an appetite. Is this spiritual? <laughs> I'm not answering. <laughs> they, every single one of these things, it's all of it. It's like, it's all of it. It's all body, mind and spirit because mm -hmm. the people that have had physical symptoms, you know, it's like it was all connected to yeah. all of it. Yeah. So it's not ever separated. It's like, even if you, you know, if you have heavy metal poisoning, you know, I'm just using, I'm just making that up. She doesn't mm -hmm. have heavy metal poisoning. I just make that <laughs> with that. But even if you have something like that and it's environmental, then there's some spiritual, emotional energy that brought it to you then to move through whatever it is. And then when we start being when we work on that and we clear those, then we're impervious to, you know, to the energies. They don't keep coming back to us. We don't keep having, you know, the same thing with it. So anyway, there, there, it, yes, it's all, it, it is. It's physical <laughs> because you're experiencing it physically and it's emotional and it's mental and it's spiritual. It's all okay. Yeah. And I don't know how long this has been going on. She didn't say, was it just last night? You know, has it been three days, five years? It's like, you know, how long ha has that, has that been going on? Mm -hmm. Or is it just something that happened last night? Uh, so, um, so and and plus the boyfriend's not here and i'm not going to cyclically read somebody that's not here mm -hmm. you know like it's either her energy or his yeah. so she says it's others. been a few months it's been yeah. a few months yeah so i'd have to separate it because you brought it in together so you're not separating your energy so yeah. i for me to do the reading i would have to go in and separate all of that so it's like that because <laughs> that's what happens when any of us that do readings we're tapping into that formless that's coming into form and, and into the energy wave. And so for us to be able to be precise and to see it, that's, you know, when I go in, I see multiple things at once. So it, I would see that big blob that you all have created together. And then it's like you handed me a mm -hmm. dumpster and I've got to dig through the dumpster to find what it is you're actually asking me. Yeah. So for her, Does she sense? doesn't have an appetite and she's not sleeping. Okay. Yeah. So for her, she doesn't have an appetite and she's not sleeping. And so, you know, also like you have to consider as well, like, you know, the, the time that everyone's going through right now, and if, if you're connecting into the collective into the fear and to the stress and the anxiety, right? What was her name? Cat. And she just wants to know if she's if it's spiritual, if that's spiritual. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> does she mean like, is she being attacked by something? Or, or I mean, does she is mean, is it, is it an ascension symptom? Is she asking that question or are you I, asking I, I'm that? saying that. Maybe that's what she's asking. If it's an ascension symptom. I don't know. I don't believe in that BS. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to ask somebody that believes in that. You should have been on the call yesterday, Kat. <laughs> It, I mean, because those that well, that is a that is one of those bandwidths that I was talking about. And it's like if you tap into that and you start seeing that and that that's what everything is, then, you know, then it starts becoming that about everything. And even if it is that, then uh, what is your what is it telling you that you need to clean up in your own body in order to bring your vibration into into a higher thing? 
So it's still about whatever it is. That so, that, so that's in. also what I'm getting too, Kimberly. It's like, you know, like she doesn't have an appetite. So maybe, you know, because she has been doing the spiritual work, you know, the practices and so on, her body might be requiring something different, right? And that's it's why she just has an appetite. When I try to go even ask the question and go to it, it's just like, it. it I don't know if it's just not precise enough because it's just it's like it's a dumpster. It's this big googly bunch of stuff here that it looks like all of this stuff's been stuck together. And so, 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 Kat, and so, why don't you sleep on sleep on the couch for a few days and see how you feel? Maybe she needs to separate her energy, mm -hmm. yeah, into so, her own feel and just see what that feels like to be separate instead of enmeshed. Is the yeah, just I'm for getting. a few days, sleep on the couch for a few days, and then see how you feel. That's what I would suggest. Okay. She needs to ground. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. that too. And yeah, it's like her energy is just all up here and kind of spinning. So like she needs to bring it down and then ground in and know it's safe to be on earth. Mm. Okay. So just one or two more quick questions that are in here. Gina was asking about something specific about her throat about her vocal cords, sorry. She says, I'm a singer and had an argument with my daughter two years ago. I lost my singing voice for almost a year. And now that it is back, I get vocal exhaustion. Oh, Gina, you've unmuted. I'm okay, here. Go. Yeah, sorry, yep. go ahead. <laughs> yep. Yeah, really, um, my daughter called me and screamed at me. It was just an over an issue with her dad. And after that, I was having terrible vocal problems. I don't know if it was like guilt or just sadness, but it went on for a whole year. I would have my, I would lose my voice in the middle of singing and it would, it was really a struggle. I did vocal therapy. I got a lot of it back, but now I just find that. Yeah. We don't need all the story. It's it exhausted. Okay. Feeling. Let's go. Let's go see. Let's see what that oh, sorry. is. Sorry. Okay. You keep cutting out. So I think that it's like cutting out because it's like, okay, we don't need all of this part of this because it's bringing up too much for you. Okay. So you, you do know, cause you said right off the bat, I don't know if it's guilt. So usually as soon as somebody says that, then that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's see. So now it is coming back. You're not even where you were. So there's some part um, that you still want to yeah, there's still some exhaustion in there if I do too much singing. Yeah. So why are you holding on to the story about about your daughter? Like all of that, you, that this is what created it. So you've already worked through that. So now you're at this point and there's just some exhaustion. So but there's some part that you haven't resolved because you went back to that story and tried to bring it into now instead of where okay. you have already stepped into. You've already done that. And now that's not here anymore. And you're your voice is back and there's still some exhaustion. Okay. So Frank, come to that point right now with me. So what did you need from that other story that you wanted to bring it in? I thought I just needed to explain. So no, that's the only reason. Tell I... me, go into yourself and ask the question. Oh. What needed to be heard? um acknowledged what wanted to be acknowledged that i feel guilty okay so feel that energy is it yours it's not really my it's not my fault it's not your That's energy the thing whose energy are you carrying i guess hers Is it okay for you to let it go, to let her pain go? I guess so. I just. Well, how does it benefit you to carry it? Because your guess so is not going to clear it. It doesn't benefit me to carry it. Has it benefit her for you to carry it? I would just like a, a relationship with her. Okay. So that if you carry her pain, then you get a relationship with her. That's the energy. Does that make sense? And then so see, it's affecting you and your voice. And if you speak up, you'll be attacked. 
Correct. Yeah. Okay. And it's okay. I mean, it's like it knocked your joy bird out was what I kept hearing. So it's like, it's, it's like to know that it's okay for you to have joy in your life. That you're, you know, that there's almost it did not like, my joy. It, yeah, that it's not my that joy. That's what of brings music. you joy. Yeah, if it that's what dr- brings you joy. So there was this part of like that you didn't even deserve to have joy in your life. You know that it's it like you it's that kind of energy. Okay, <clears throat> so it looks like a bob wire, like all wrapped around. You know, like that you've had. You know what bob wire is? Like a bob wire fence. It looks like that's all wrapped in that. And it, it's not mm-hmm. yours to carry. So we're, we're not going to pull it out because it actually might hurt. <laughs> so this, is it okay to dissolve that now? Absolutely. How would you, how would you dissolve it? Um, it's a tone. It's a tone. It's like bringing we back cut a, it. Oh, oh, the tone. It's like a tone that wants to be like for you to vibrate it out. That's how you dissolve it is that you listen to it and let it speak. And it might come out even like screaming, but it's like until it dissolves. And so you actually, for you you, to drop into it and to listen to it and then sound it. And then as when you sound it, that's your most powerful tool that you actually carry. And so as you do that, it's going to clear the vibration and then you're going to see how you can use that yourself. Do you speak in light language yet? No. Yeah. So that's probably in there too, to come out, you know, at some point. So even the sound that comes out might be even, you know, it may not be words. It may be like just frequencies and energetic frequencies that want to be sounded out. Okay. Okay. So I, yeah, so do that wherever you feel safe to do it at, you know, and till, and then you're going to dissolve it yourself. So talk to it, ask it, what's the sound? And even if it's a screeching sound or it may be beautiful angel sounds, whatever it is, but then that's going to dissolve that. And then ask your joy, what is its sound and sing your joy. And when you start connecting to it, then this other will dissolve. Okay. Okay. Ask your, yeah, ask for the tone of it. And when you hear it, then you'll know what that is. Great. To stay aligned with that. You're not responsible for her joy. And it's, and our kids are our hardest ones. You know, it's like, yeah. that's the hardest with that. In, I mean, for me, it is. I don't know. Maybe it's not for everybody. I, me too. I, I, I shouldn't Absolutely. projected that to you. <laughs> but for the three of us, it is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah, right. So like almost like you didn't deserve to have the joy if she wasn't in joy okay let me see if there's anything that we can let's do that for everybody we're going to bring in joy in some way that's really the key to our whole divine blueprint is the joy when we're connected to that then that is when we're our sovereign self Connect it. See if you can sound that joy out. We'll all be your sacred witness and listen to it. The exhaustion is coming from carrying what's not yours to carry, okay? And when you release that, then that was not going to be there anymore.
Are you still on me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because my thing keeps freezing up. I know. So I, I think you've been I freezing. Can't I thought because I was getting ready to ask Laura. It's like, is she still frozen? I'm yeah, not I sure keep freezing up again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No worries. Okay. But it feels lighter in my chest. Good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I felt a heaviness and it's it's dissipating. It's moving out. That's why I'm sitting here rubbing the top of my chest. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's like it's re that's releasing. Yeah. Awesome. So keep doing that, okay, for yourself. Yep. I will. The two, the two tones, right? <clears throat> one one to dissolve and then the one to bring in the joy. Right. Okay. Okay. And then awesome. it'll just be joy. <laughs> or you'll have them awesome. to use whenever you need to. Yeah. You'll know Thank what you. they are. Yeah. Ask them what they are and listen to them and, uh, and let them come out. And then you'll have those as a tool to use. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're Good. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> that was awesome. Good. Thanks. Um, all right. So one last quick question from Edwin. Edwina is asking, um, I moved from New York to Connecticut and I'm regretting the move. I, I'm hoping that's Connecticut. I have no idea. What should I do now? Any advice? <laughs> move again. <laughs> oh, that's what I got too. Like, move again. Yeah. It's like you did it once and then you think, and sometimes we think, see, that's when our decisions keep it. You know, we made the decision. So we think, oh no, well, I've got to stay with this decision. But maybe oh. that move was to get you moving so yeah. then it's like you make one move then it's like okay it's the next move but that i mean that's clear I, that's what i heard move again that's her answer me, me, me too that's what that's what i got too and he advised that fast, again. it was like <laughs> and then that's yeah. the thing we don't have to stay with our choices with our decisions if they don't serve us if they don't work for us if we have regret whatever choose something else yeah, sometimes there's nothing to work on. You know, it's like I could have went into her energy field and tried to do a bunch of stuff and see if we could change it all around. And now, you know, and it, but it didn't feel like that that was the case. It no. just felt like that, that wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Um, so I would ask what the learning is with it and what the, for the experience. And it, and so it, and then, you know, go from there. Exactly. All right, so I know we're going to do a process like we always do, right? Yes. But we, before we do that, I just want to talk quick, really quickly about the special offer. It's available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Kim 10. <laughs> it's always so different. Kim 10. Um, and there's a package A and a package B. Kimberly, you want to talk about it? Uh, the package A is membership, and so there's like three calls, but you'll actually get more than that because I'm yeah. always doing calls and membership. So I have a new platform now, and so my membership, when you go into it, this is it's new for the, it's just been up like a couple months. So there's all kinds of uh, already, there's all kinds of information in there and transmissions and uh files and files of stuff that you can listen to. So that's in that you get that now. Before I was doing membership on Facebook and the calls were there and that's where they were stored and now they're in the platform. So there's things in there to support your journey and I'm releasing things into the membership like every couple of weeks or something because I don't want to give them too much at once and then mm -hmm. it's like kind of overwhelming. So so that's what member that's what membership is that you actually get to um, go into my platform and um, be in there for that time period. And while you're in membership, you also get 25% off of any sessions that you do with me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's also a bonus that membership gets. Okay, so then the next one is you get that plus a, um, is it a 30 minute session? Is that what I put on yeah, there? Yeah, 30, 30 minute, minute session. session. Mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, 30 minute session in package B. So it's the, the session two. And 12 there, days of transmissions. Okay. I started saying, <laughs> is, is that one got the 12 days of transmission on it? Because some of the package do and some of them don't. Yeah. And so when I do the 12 days of transmissions, I normally do those like at, um, uh, you know, equal knocks or um, we have a, that, that one's probably going to be on the eclipse that's coming up. We have an eclipse that's coming up in November. 
Mm -hmm. And so usually when I do the 12 days, it's around the energy like that. And this morning I was feeling it. It's like, okay, it's time to do, you know, transmissions again. There's an eclipse coming and it feels like it's going to be to bust us through that energy. So what happens in that is for the 12 days, I set up a grid, your name goes on it. And I, I listen to the group and the energies and bring in the frequencies and so I usually uh, go live on that in the Facebook group mm -hmm. and do the transmissions every day in it. And so sometimes I hear like instructions for you all to do, you know, during that time period and um, things that you can do that will help you help you with it. So there, so that's okay. what happens then. There are retonements like light language that's coming in and then it goes into the container. I tap into Gaia and then whatever that's ready to come in for humanity. Awesome. Good. So those two packages are available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Kim 10. Um, so please do take a look at those package A and package B. All right. So now we want to do the activation for today. What are we going to do? Yes. I don't know. Let's tap into it and find out. We're going to go into, we're going to do these codes and go into our source codes. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, and, the seed, oh, and, we're gonna, and the seeds. Remember yeah. you're talking about seeds, yeah. Yeah, and we're gonna dis we'll disconnect from the mind of humanity and then drop into our seeds, and then we're gonna activate mm -hmm. those. So what I'm hearing when we activate those, it's gonna give us a um almost a, um like the the blueprint will give a place for those seeds to activate out mm -hmm. into, and then uh, what we're what we're seeding and what we're gonna harvest what's coming in, what wants to come in. And for some reason, they're telling me that not to be disillusioned when we do things and it seems like I've done this and done this and why isn't anything changing? Because that the, the view that we see of ourselves is sometimes just here and that our multiple di dimensional and aspects and timelines are receiving the energy. And so mm -hmm. it's like that part of you that is already <laughs> in another lifetime, the energies, you're supporting it too. And it's awesome. like, so <laughs> all of that's there. And this just just one illusion that sometimes we get trapped into. Mm -hmm. So they're telling me to tell you all that, to know, and that you can tap into that part. So it's, it's not for nothing. It's not for nothing. It is right. beneficial. It's helpful. It's serving a purpose. Yes, somewhere. <laughs> oh, my next life, my next one that uh, has came to me. I mean, she's already here and she's probably six or eight now. And she's came to me more than once and thanked me for all that I did in order for her to have what she does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought I was the finishing lifetime and it is, it is this lifetime, but she's, we're both here at the same time. And so mm -hmm. that can happen, right. you know, in the energy of all of our little multiple selves that we really are. We're cool. all part of each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody here is. Okay. So let's breathe. So just breathe and use your breath. We're going to disconnect from all this mumble jumbo stuff that's out here. So breathe in and we're going to breathe in clarity, the vibration of clarity. So breathe that into your body and let that go into all of your cells. And then we're going to breathe out peace. And then we're going to breathe in the peace and then we're going to breathe in, breathe in peace. And they're telling me we're breathing out knowing there's a knowing connection and then breathing in destiny and breathing out creation and breathing in passion and breathing out currency and the flow of the divine currency and what that is for you. Okay, so just bring yourself into your body and we're gonna ask to disconnect from all of those mind matrices out there, humanity's chaotic mind that doesn't serve us and that the energies that we sent out to plug into that, we unplug from that 
and we bring that it's air psychic abilities and air energy that we sent out and entangled into that looking for answers. So we're going to bring all of that back. And when you pull that energy back, when you unplug from it and all those cords you sent out to be enmeshed with it, that energy comes back to your being. It's your energy comes back into your third eye. It's your discernment. And the answers are really within you. So feel that, what that feels like, the difference in between that. So there's a mind matrix that we created in this lifetime from our own experiences. It's our own personal mind. So we're going to disconnect from that right now too. We're just going to ask to disconnect from it, put it up on a shelf so that we can just drop into our heart and see through the heart, through the eyes of our heart and feel the connection of our heart. That it's safe to be disconnected from all of those mental constructs. So we're going to ask him to disconnect from the family lineage mind construct and our own DNA, our family and our own DNA construct that goes out past just the experiences of this family mind, but out all into all of your DNA strands, all the way back to your star lineage. So we're just going to disconnect from the construct of the mind itself. All those woulda, coulda, shouldas that's been all entangled into everybody else's mind. So breathe that energy in and drop into your heart. So there's, it's your sacred chamber. And between those shoulder blades, there's a doorway there. If you can't come through the front, you may still have heart walls. So you open up the back of your the back of your heart, between your heart wings, open that chamber up into your sacred chamber. Feel that presence of that, of what that's like to step into that. It's beautiful, beautiful inner world, this sanctuary, this divine temple your divine essence, your inner awakened mastery, your master self, that's a, the observer, the one that understands, that lives within your heart. Connect to that energy and feel what that feels like to be connected to the sacred part of you. So I have an infinity symbol that goes from my heart to the heart of my divine master self. And you may have a different symbol or it may be the same as that. So if you, if you don't feel that, then you can imagine there's an infinity symbol between the two of you and that you come together as one. And that you are this divine, ascended, enlightened being. Feel that energy, that expansion, that love. So we're going to drop that all the way down through our central column, our center, all the way into the heart of Gaia, the spirit of earth itself, and feel that connection to that. That it's safe to be on earth. And how much love and support 
that earth herself has for you and the celebration of the day that she knew that you would be here, that you said yes to come and partner with her to have this experience within humanity. She carries your earth records. And she holds that blueprint for you. She's been waiting to connect this to you, to hand this to you. She holds this sacred energy that's always there. And she loves it when you come and connect to it. So feel that experience, how welcoming that is. That she welcomes you to this connection. And you may see it, feel it, hear it. What does it sound like? What are its colors? What wants to be expressed within this divine blueprint, your own destiny codes? And when you connect to them, they light up their self. There's like an energetic reaction that happens when you bring awareness to this. What wants to be created? What's waiting to be birthed, to be activated, to be retoned into the truth that it truly is? Just feel that energy and what that's like and where that's at. And the joy that's within that. Okay, so I'm being told we're going to activate the infinity symbol below our feet. And this is that infinite love support from Gaia herself. So we activate this infinity symbol, what it's like to be supported by this energy and this love. Truly feel that support in every cell of your body, this infinite wisdom that Mother Earth herself carries and the support for us. And there's another infinity symbol at your knees and when that activates, it's how to walk forth with this energy, this activation, connection, remembering of the divine blueprint that you came in with. So that energy moves up and there's infinity symbol at our hips. And when that activates, it's the truth of survival. Creator's definition, this infinite being that we are, that activates. So we've activated this infinity grid of how to be supported, how to walk forth, and the infinite wisdom, the infinite truth of our infinity our own survival codes and the truth of what that really is. And so that energy moves up through all of our energy signatures and centers. It's like flooding into those, into any places where there's any disconnections, any gaps, any old energy that's not ours to carry. It's like kind of, it's pushing that out as the energy comes up, this all sustaining energy. Okay, into the heart. So feel that energy flowing into the heart the truth of all of this, the support how to move forth with it, your infinite wisdom. So breathe that in, feel that in your sacred chamber.
So bring your awareness into your heart flower, the seeds that's planted within the flower itself. And for that flower to bloom, to show itself to you, to recognize this flower. You may smell it, you may see it, you may get the color of it. It may be a flower that you know, that you recognize, or it may be some exotic flower that you've never encountered. So connect to that energy, to the beauty, the essence of this flower. And the, the heart itself opens, the front door opens and the back door opens and there's a lot from your heart that beams out all the way through the center of your heart. And it's like highlighting this flower, this beautiful flower. You may have a whole bouquet. Nasate and a Nikori Shatara Nakari Sitte and a Nikori Shatakara Nasata Kari Yatara. So the observer that lives within your heart, that inner awakened master that you are, connect to them because they hold, they are like the secret gardener, is what I'm hearing of this flower. They understand it how to take care of it, what its requirements are. So ask for that information to be handed to you. The sacred gift and the knowledge to nurture this and what these seeds are, these magical seeds that are within this flower. You can ask for those to be kind of like to be handed to them is the image that I'm seeing. And then to activate these, we're going to activate these sacred seeds that are your destiny, creation, passion, and currency. So you may get a sense of what they are, how to plant them, where to plant them, when to plant them. And to witness this garden as it grows and the beauty that it is. How does this garden nurture you and activate this plan within you? of your own codes, your own source codes. So you may collect those flowers and have a sacred place for you that you can always connect to the flower. And there may be flowers that you hand out to others. And there are flowers that you may receive from others. So feel that energy of that and that flow
breathe that in and that activates the heart and the high heart. The high heart carries the divine plan and the destiny within the plan that's connected to the template and the map that Gaia herself holds for us. So breathe that in and there's a activation of unity to receive, to embody. can feel that heart expanding and those wings expanding all the way out into your whole field when it connects to all your binary codes activating repairing So breathe that energy in and it goes all the way up through that central column through your throat and the expansion within the throat chakra itself. So it clears any discordant energies that aren't yours that never have been, and it's not yours to carry anymore, and that it's safe to let this go. And that energy moves all the way up. into the pineal, into your third eye, and into the sacred chamber within, the, within your sacred mind. There is a sacred mind that is that God's source, the mind of God that's within your mind. When this energy activates with these creation codes, so like that oneness with source itself through the heart and it activates this mind of compassion the kind mind compassionate mind all of these source codes and these activations and creation so I'm seeing the infinity symbol there. So the sacred chamber of the heart and the sacred chamber of the mind itself become one. And that energy expands out above through your transpersonal chakra, through that connecting to your higher self, aligning this energy, your source codes, and activating your blueprint for the time now and how to move forth with this energy. So there's another infinity symbol up above your head and that activa activates 
aligning that source mind, God mind, in your own personal sacred chamber within your mind. It's like the heart of your mind. To your heart, aligning your solar purpose, your soul purpose, and your earth purpose in the unified working unit. So the soul itself, there's a simulation point at the, at the breastplate where we come in and our sternum and that recalibrates, recalibrates the soul into this energy to embody this, to align. So feel that connection to that, that anchors into your system all the way down into Gaia's heart, your heart, and your God source mind heart is what I'm seeing. It's like the, I don't know the word for that yet. I think it's the cosmic heart. And the consciousness of that. And when we align to that energy, there's a cohesive frequency that, that is our guiding light and a unification within that. So breathe that energy in I'm going to anchor that all the way through all of our timelines all our dimensional aspects and this time we call now so when you're ready come back into this space in this time that we call now and while you all are integrating in i'm going to download some frequencies into water for you so if you have a container of water that's good and if you don't that's okay too that's good because we'll send the intention for it to go in to wherever you intend this to be so we're going to put this, what are you telling me? What is that? Codes of compassion. Okay, so you can use that water in like you would a homeopathy or drink it or in your bath water, add it to other water and it will help um, stabilize the flow is what they're telling me. So that's aligning that earth purpose and that soul purpose and your soul or cosmic purpose. Ooh. Ah, that was a lot. That was a lot. I was all over the place, felt all sorts of things. I don't even know anymore. But <laughs> when we were in that God mind place, they've been taking me there a lot lately. And, and it's like, I've been there, but didn't know what it was and into that chamber. And now I'm getting more like words that we have here, you know, mm -hmm. to try to describe it. But what I saw was that because when we went on out, then I, I heard, well, God mind and God heart isn't separated. 
you know, like we kind of separate that ourselves, and it's one unified unit. Mm -hmm. And I could see that, like that, that compassionate heart of that. And um, you're going to like this story. I had my poodle that he's no longer in physical body anymore, but my prince, he showed that to me one time that how he carried that, that he didn't, you know, he wasn't separate. It's like he, his, his God mind and his, you know, it was all one unified working thing that there wasn't a separation within like him, like that, it, that there was, you know, in some of the humans I was working with, like he showed it to me. He was, the, it was the first time that I saw how it was unified and that that is what we're going into, you know, mm -hmm. that there'll be no separation between, between the two. Mm -hmm. And so then you are not carrying, cause we're in that high heart energy. We won't be carrying that the wounded heart, you know, right. like the emotional wounds of the heart. So I, 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 I got that sense of that. And then I like felt his presence and it was like, Oh yeah, you're the first being that ever showed that to me. Nice, nice. So I know if all dog species have it or, you know, they're evolved just like we are. It's like, yeah. they're, they're not all the same, <laughs> but he showed it to me one time. He was like, look at mine. So you can see what this is. And it's like, oh, wow, this is different. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, so Gina was uh, making lots of vocal sounds during the, during the process and moved the Yay. heaviness from her chest to her sinuses, to her head and out, which is awesome. Yeah, and yeah. during the infinity symbol placement, she said, my core started moving in a circular motion. Awesome. Good. And uh, Tina says, thank you so much. What a wonderful activation. Towards the end of the process, I saw a dragon's eye with tears flowing out, then got the sense of the dragons being grateful for the love. Nice. And she said, I've had three dragons around lately and wonder if they have been around to feel the love. Oh. Nice. Oh, that's really interesting because when uh, a couple weeks ago, when they were really taking me into that God mind chamber a lot, and I am every day, like that's the first thing I do. And I met a dragon there. My dragon was there waiting for me. And my dragon was in there like walking around with me and it was like showing me the world. And it felt like it was like, like uh, me, like an avatar aspect of me, you know, that shows up in that way. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of like in the avatar movie there flying little it was yeah. like that that it was part of me so that's interesting because i saw i've seen dragons there too mm -hmm. nice good <laughs> and i yeah. forgot that until she said it it's like oh yeah i forgot my dragon was like oh we've been waiting for you <laughs> yeah exactly good yeah. awesome thank you no that was that was powerful so definitely drink lots of water right walk around a little bit give your body time to integrate tina I think it was, no, it was Kat who was talking about um, not being able to sleep. Hopefully you'll be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> well, that's why I asked what, yeah, how long that had been going on. Cause that new moon we just had in Aries did that to everybody because oh, yeah. of the energy that was in it. But if it's been going on with two months with her. Yeah, a couple of months, a few months. Yeah, ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, ground, 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 ground. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was really powerful. And, and you know- you disconnect from those minds because that's what I do if I go to bed and there's too much running through my mind I go I'll just say it you know it's like when I walk you all through the process I'm doing more but I just go disconnect from the mind of humanity from my own personal mind from you know family the DNA like disconnect from all those minds but and mm -hmm. I literally feel it and I can feel myself like coming into my body so then I can drop down and go to sleep to be able to travel, you know, because when we don't have enough energy that we're out there and we're not dropping, we have to drop in to drop out to be mm -hmm. able to sleep. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So disconnect, disconnect from the collective, disconnect from humanity, mind uh, construct, just disconnect from your own mind for a little while, you know, and just be in your body and yeah, awesome, good. Wow, Whew. I feel like I could take a nap, you know? I do, I know, I, can, I do too. It's like, okay, I felt it too. And it was like, yeah. Just, yeah. Every so time I do you. these transmissions, they're always different. You know, oh, it course. depends on the collective and the energy that we're in in the moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So that was powerful. So please be gentle with yourself. <clears throat> All right, so be, be gentle with yourself, drink lots of water, 
uh, I wouldn't listen to this again for a, at least a day or two, okay? But you can, go, of course, go back and listen to this again if you'd like. I'm go back and listen. I'm going to listen to the transmission part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you. And please do take a look at the special offer that Kimberly has for us this time. It's available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Kim 10. All right, so uh, awesome. Good. Thank you, Kimberly. That was and we'll be back on Expanded View Monday. Did you even we do will. it Monday? No. Did you? I, I did. I did. My eyes were too swollen to go to look to see if you actually went on and did it too. No. We took a break. It was time to have a break. See, our exactly. bodies needed a break. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll be back on Monday. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Um, continue to celebrate your birthday, Kimberly and Tina. All right. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate 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 all right everyone thank you thank you until next time may you continue Bye. to be blessed with an all. abundance of joy peace love happiness prosperity and radiant health sending you all much love and blessings always bye for now bye thank you for being the gift that you are <laughs> uh, thank you bye